Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and today is day number one of Blade Show 2023 and we've got two new Becker knife and tool designs to talk about today. We've got, uh, we got the chance to interview Ethan Becker a few months ago, back at the SHOT Show actually, but now that this weekend that both of these products have been officially unveiled, we get to show them to you now. So we're gonna cut right back to the past now to our interview with my good friend Ethan Becker. Ethan, good to see you. Good to see you, boss. Absolutely. Always. We've got a new fixed blade and a new folder to talk yeah. about. Yeah, we do. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna turn it over to you. Let me let you uh, say what you would like to say. That's a dangerous thing to do. You oh, know I know. That. Yes. <laughs> all right. As long as you accept responsibility. It's all. It's all on us. It's Thomas's fault. <laughs> okay. So, this is our new folder, which is a smaller version of. Um, our other folder. It's a liner lock, D2 blade. The uh, clips can be changed around top to bottom, right to left. So any way you like to carry, we're good. This is a, just a nice size. Yeah. Uh, if I had it to do over again, we would have introduced this one first. Mm -hmm. And I've been carrying uh, the big one uh, every day and uh, because I wore 511 pants all the time it's not a, not a big deal right <laughs> but for most people it's too big for EDC mm -hmm. this to me is an absolutely perfect EDC size yeah about a three inch blade a little bit thinner yep than the uh, the bigger one and I like that you went with d2 as kind of the, the starting point on this yeah. rather than the stainless um, be really good It'll do, it'll do what it's supposed to yeah. do. Well, it's still, you know, you, you talked before about the large one kind of obviously being a very Becker design, but taking a little bit of inspiration from the Sod Buster. Yes. Like the classic, just hardworking, basic pocket knife. Yep. It feels good. I like, for my hand size, I like this kick up at the back. You and I have talked about yeah. that before where the pinky likes to catch that and you can really manipulate the blade, turn it this way and right. that and still get a full grip on it when choked up, just. Right. It's really a three finger knife for people with big hands, but three fingers is all you need. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, um, and if you want a four finger knife, you need a longer knife. <laughs> and you sell one. In yes, fact. we do. There is, there is one available. Four finger, we got it for you, buddy. <laughs> no, that's, right. that's cool. I like the, uh, the pinch grip here right behind the pivot. The way the, the swells work, that makes a really nice resting yeah. point that I'm finding right there. I'm really looking forward to spending a lot of time with this one. I've had I've had one for a few months. And uh, of course, because it was a pre-production prototype, the liner didn't quite register properly. <laughs> so it was always a little nervous, but it's a nice blade. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love the shape, and again, just that slightly thinner blade stock. I think really sets it yeah. sets it over the top for me. And yeah, this is gonna be really good. Everybody knows Ethan loves flat ground blades because they're slicier and they don't move when you're going through food and stuff, and uh, or anything else. And uh, and it's ground high enough that it's nice and slicey. Yeah, yeah, for and sure. The whole point of a knife is to cut stuff. Some people forget that sometimes. Um, I have. <laughs> I didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> well, nobody's perfect, and certainly nobody has ever accused me of perfection. <laughs> Talk to my all my ex-wives. <laughs> mm. I've talked to one of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking yeah. of yes. flat grinds and, and sliciness. Yes. Okay. I got to preface this. This is my take on the Nesmuk. And uh, it's a BK-19. It's full height ground. The actual profile is actually quite, uh, quite thin, slicey thin. And because it's made from cold rolled 1095, it's still plenty tough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I first got into business, I was scared to death of two things. One is somebody would break one of my knives. And being German, I know I can break anything. <laughs> you give me a five pound sledgehammer and watch out. <laughs> so, but 
but steel choice is still very important. And the cold roll 1095 is, has a better, uh, a better grain structure. And the Crovan, that little bit of extra chromium and vanadium makes a heck of a difference. Mm -hmm. And I think I told you, I haven't done any destructive testing on this one yet, but this guy, not this particular knife, but um, one of its uh, brothers or sisters, I drove into 1095, or dro drove into 1095, <laughs> drove into end grain white oak uh, to where it just wouldn't pop out. And when I bent, we got over 45 degrees of flux before failure. And if you haven't figured out that you're about to break your knife After going over 30 degrees, degrees, you probably deserve a broken knife. <laughs> but of course, yeah. being made by K-Bar, they'll probably take care of you. If oh, they will, like they that. will. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but it's, it's a great, it's a great steel. And the, the difference between hot rolled and cold rolled is big. Mm -hmm. And the Crovan does really make a, a difference. I didn't always believe that, mm -hmm. but, um, I have become a believer. I mean, regular 1095 is okay. Mm -hmm. So, but this is just a little bit of extra. And we buy our steel from the from Germany because they have the best chemistry this this week. So I I'm a fan of this blade shape. Um, you, you and I have had many conversations about yes. the Nesmuk blade over the years. So um, imagine my surprise when you showed me. Well, this. I knew that you were gonna, I was going to get a lot of grief about this. <laughs> but I guess in this the end, in the end, if you think about it. Um, Ethan backpedaling here. Um, <laughs> there is no, it's just like there are no bad children, only bad parents. Mm -hmm. um, so I figured that somewhere in that blade shape, there was a real knife. <laughs> Part of this, guys, is me giving him the raz. <laughs> well, well <So>. taken. <laughs> No, but, I, I think this is great though. It's definitely more of a, a Beckery take on yeah. the Nesmuk. It's it's a little pointier than many interpretations yeah. out there. I, you, uh, there's a reason there's a point on a knight. Mm -hmm. I mean, there really is. And I've, I've, my knives have gotten, over the years, they've gotten thinner and they've gotten pointier mm -hmm. because uh, frequently you want to use the point. Mm -hmm. to, drill through wood or whatever. Um, that's if you, only if you've forgotten your Swiss Army knife with a decent... With its all. It with hits its a on it, yeah. So, but it's a, it's, it has, it has a point. It, um, oh, what's his face? Um, uh, told me one day about the 16, he said, you can't get nut meats out. And I Because the tip's a little too broad or? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like, hmm, missed one. Mm. Uh, Brian Griffin. Yeah, gave me a lot of grief about it. Yeah. And I, uh, I took it to heart mm -hmm. because for all his faults, he knows he's occasionally, so knows, yeah. he occasionally knows something I don't. Right. <laughs> so, well, yeah, you definitely got a little more point with this one. The full flat grind on this is gonna make it slicier than the 18 or the 16, of course. Right. And one of the details I like especially is the distal taper yeah. coming down from the spine. So you're thickest here at the back, thinning out towards the tip. I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but for the right. folks out there at home, of course, um, that's going to be really nice for those those more fine cuts you want to make with the tip. It doesn't weigh anything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and there are a lot of factors. I never forget I was having uh, a couple of beers with some other designers and with um, a good buddy of mine who had been uh, in the Rangers, in the Charlie Rangers in Vietnam. And we were discussing how to build a better K-Bar because mm -hmm. that was everybody's everybody's go-to. It still is the go-to for many and mm -hmm. it's not a bad knife. Mm -hmm. It's a great knife, actually. And um, 
So I was talking, and of course I was thinking thicker. This is 30 years ago, and I was thinking thicker, and I was thinking this and thinking that. And uh, Steve, it was Steve Dick, and Steve said to me, he said, an infantryman doesn't need any more goddamn weight. Mm -hmm. So if you're carrying a 120 pound pack, yeah. you don't want to add an extra two yeah. pounds. Yeah. I know as a backpacker, yeah. you don't want any extra weight. I mean, I never was to the point of pulling the, the paper off the tea bag right. thing <laughs> to save weight. Right, right. But I know people who did, yeah. and they have a point. I mean, it's a matter of, and this is, a, and this, by the way, a great, as you know, um, uh, if you're this thin, mm -hmm. you can really process food mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And we all think about, and, and a knife should be capable of doing hard work. I always say a small knife ought to do the work of a big knife, with a baton, a big knife ought to be able to do the work of a small knife. Mm -hmm. And uh, I took one of my BK um, patrol machetes one time, 14 inch blade, yep. and built um, a bow and uh, a, a complete fire kit. Um, because it was ground all the way back. Mm -hmm. And you could, you clutch up on it. I was uh, doing it in a crowded garage with a bunch of other guys, and I got more room than anybody else. <laughs> this sounds like something our, our good buddy Joe Flowers would be doing over in the other hall right now, probably. Yes, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So. Well, you're right. I mean, the, the sliciness here will let you do all of that food prep stuff, but it's still got the strength. And to the weight comment you made, like all the, uh, the mid-sized Beckers, I think, there's certainly lighter weight knives out there if you're really going for like the ultra light things. Right. But for a good compromise between being weight conscious but still having robust quote unquote survival knife capability, these have always been a good choice. Yep. Yeah. And so, I know which one's uh, at the top of my list now, of course. How did I get, I could have guessed that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, it feels it's, very nice. It's really. Uh, same oh, same sheath as the uh, as the 18. It's the same sheath, mm -hmm. and I've frequently said, and I can brag on this sheath heavily because I didn't design it. <laughs> <laughs> but I've always I've said many times, nobody buys a knife for the sheath. But if they were going to buy a knife for the sheath, this would be the sheath mm -hmm. because you can flip everything around us. Uh, you can take um, the hard an right Allen here. wrench and yep. turn everything right to left, um, and when you're working around camp, as you know, you're pulling it in and out because if you're smart, you never put the knife down mm -hmm. uh, on the ground somewhere yep. because a few leaves will cover it up and you'll spend a lot of time finding it. Maybe you won't. Right. So or maybe your fingers will before yes. the rest. Yeah. <laughs> Kicking around is probably a better idea. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, this has got an easy any outy and it's very solid. There's no rattle, easy out, easy in, and for a round camp, you don't have to use a strap to make it secure. Mm -hmm. um, this guarantees that, that it's not going to catch on anything uh, on the trail. So, um, so even if it did, you've still got the retention. Of you've the, still got the retention. And I know you've told me this as well. I mean, your neck knife here is a perfect example of the way you might like to use this nice right. flat area to strap on some extra extra goodies. Would you shall like we me say. to go through that? We've gone through it before, but you can touch on it real right. briefly. I stole this idea from Dave McIntyre, who uh, won the Alone Series the second year. A great fellow, by the way. And um, so, just a piece of bike inner tube, uh, button light, uh, good compass. This one, uh, the the best button compass I know of is made by Suwanto. They're expensive, but they last longer. And then we've got a fire, a uh, little fire, uh, ferrocerium and magnesium rod here. And we have a little sharpener that'll sharpen fish hooks mm -hmm. as well as your knife. Yeah, any nice small, especially small flat goodies that you yeah. want to have along for the ride? Total weight is about three and a half ounces. Yeah. So you can works do great that. on that sheath and a great platform on the uh, the big guy too. Yeah, 
And you can do it on any knife sheath, mm -hmm. but that works best if it's on a Becker sheath. <laughs> of course. Awesome. Well, I, I dig both of these. I'm definitely buying both of these, I'm sure. Um, thanks for taking time to show it to us. Hey, you know me. I do. I get Force you talking. me to talk about knives, <laughs> especially my own. So, good uh, time. Absolutely. Every single time. David? Thank you. Folks, if you're uh, watching this video, that means if these aren't available yet, they are going to be available very soon. Uh, hopefully when this video is up, we will have uh, these available at least for pre-order on the Knife Center website. You can check the link in the description to take you over to our Becker Knife and Tool page. And if they're not here yet, just keep an eye out here and on our social media channels. I think they're winners. Thanks guys, Ethan. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Always a pleasure.